Chapter 8 will be all about different ways of using definite integrals, so applications of definite integrals. And the first one is using um, definite integrals to find the average value of a function. So what that means is, you know, the y-coordinate could be going up and down, but what is the average y-coordinate for a function? Um, so first, the formula, like, um, when we think of average, we think, okay, we're going to add up a whole bunch of things and divide by how many there are. But when we're talking about a continuous function, there are infinitely many y-coordinates along that um, interval from a to b. So we can't really take up all of the y-coordinates and divide by how many there are. But I want to remind you that when we looked at the integral from a to b, we took the y-coordinate as the height of the rectangle, and we took dx as the width of the rectangle, and all of the little tiny widths would add up to b minus a, that, the width of that interval. And all of the little tiny heights would, um, would be a bunch of f of x's, infinitely many f of x's um, between a and b. And so if we took the area and divided by the width, we would get the height, and that would be the average height. So what we do is we take the integral, which is the area, and we're going to divide it by the width, which is b minus a. And so remember, this part gives us the area, and this part says we're going to divide by the width. And what we're left with is the average height along that interval. And so the average value of the function is this formula, the integral divided by the width of the interval. So the way we use the average value formula is lots of different ways, but one way is we might have be given an equation and no calculator. What is the average value of the square root function on the interval from 9 to 25? So then we would need to take the integral from 9 to 25 of the square root of x dx, and we're going to divide that by 25 minus 9, which is 16. So when we do this integral, we'd have to do the antiderivative. So x to the 1 half plus 1 would be 3 halves, so 2 thirds times x to the 3 halves. And we're going to do 1 16th of that from 9 to 25. Looks like we can cancel here, and this would be an 8. So 1 24th of 25 to the 3 halves minus 9 to the 3 halves. And whenever I see a fractional exponent, my first instinct is to freak out, and my second instinct is to use the bottom number as the root first, because that makes my number smaller, and then the top of the fraction, the numerator, to um, use as an exponent. So I recommend rooting first so that your, um, your number is smaller. So I have 1 24th times 5 to the third minus 3 to the third. So 1 24th, I'm almost there, <laughs> times 1 25 minus 27. Is that, what is that, 90, 98? or um, 98 over 24. And if I graph the integral, that would be the area. And then if I graph the average value, which is a little bit more than 4, I can see that sometimes my y-coordinate is higher than 4, sometimes it's lower than 4, but on average, it's about 4 on that interval. So here's an example of a question that you might be asked while you have a calculator, which is larger the average value of natural log of 3x or the average value of the square root of x on the interval from 1 third to 2. So I'm going to be doing the integral. Oops. I'm going to be doing the integral from 1 third to 2 of natural log of 3x. And I will then divide that by 
2 minus 1 third. I will divide that by 5 thirds. Or multiply it by 3 fifths would be another way of saying that. So I'm going to grab a calculator because that's not something I would be expected to be able to do. Um, I mean, I could do it by hand, but I'm not going to know how big the value is by hand. So just a reminder on how to do integrals on your calculator. You know, menu, um, calculus, and numerical integral. And I'm realizing, oh yeah, you can see that. Um, so then I'll go from 1 third to 2 of natural log of 3x. And then I'm going to divide by 5 thirds or multiply by 3 fifths. And so that's the average value of the natural log function. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the um, square root function. And it looks like the natural log function, even though it starts off smaller, winds up having a larger average value than the square root function on that integral. Um, it's easy to forget um, that you can use a calculator on a calculator portion of a test. So just don't forget to do that and don't try to do these integrals by hand if you don't have to. Um, here is a question you might be given. Here's a function f, which, is consist, which consists of a semicircle and a line segment. What is the average value of f on the interval from 5 to 20? So we would want to take the integral of f from 5 to 20, and we'll divide by 15. Um, but the way I'm going to take the integral of f is by finding area using um, area formula. So a quarter of a circle with a radius of 5 would be 1 fourth of 25 pi. Um, and then plus this square, which is a 5 by 5 square, so plus 25. And then plus this rectangle, which is a 5 by 10 rectangle, so plus 50. And then plus this triangle, which is a 5 by 10 triangle. So plus 25, and then I'm going to divide all of that by 15. And a reminder that I don't actually have to do that math because um, the arithmetic is optional. Um, but that would be how you would get that answer. Um, and then the other way we could do average value of a function is if we're given a table of data. If we're given a table of data, the way we'll calculate the integral is with an approximation method. So if I'm using RAM and I want to know the um, first, the average velocity for 40 seconds, so I'm going to divide by 40 and I'm going to go from 0 to 40 of this velocity function, um, I'm going to take, um, you know, an interval of 10 with a height of 14. So I'll do 1 40th times 10 times 14 plus 10 times 22 plus 10 times 29 plus 10 times 35. And I don't, when I'm using RAM, I don't use the first value in the table. So this is a good reminder of how to, um, how to use RAM. I'm not going to do the arithmetic because I believe that you could do that. Um, and I also want to point out that these average value problems are not difficult, but it is easy to get confused about what you're asked to do. Um, I asked you for the average velocity. Well, you were given the velocity function, so the average va velocity is going to be the average value of that function. But if I'd asked you for average acceleration, that would be the rate of change of the velocity function because acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So I want the average rate of change. So if I had asked for average acceleration, that would be 35 minus 5 divided by 40 minus 0. So just to be aware of the wording can get confusing with these problems. The, the math generally isn't as long as you're okay with integrals.
All right, that's average value. Thank you.